Katie Lafalcha, welcome back. Irish Granny Tarot, and this is our Saturday book, The Convoluted Universe, book three, video five. Videos one, two, and three last week. Video four just now, and now we're gonna do video five. This section is called Levels and Dimensions and Karma. And uh, Canon describes working with a new subject in trance named Janet. She's on a beautiful place that's not the earth. There are double doors to a stairway to a huge domed structure. There's light and lots of seats. And this is a place to learn. There's an old guy, that's how I wrote it anyway, an old guy with a beard and a staff like a wizard. And he says, I've come to you in one of my fun costumes. What do you want to know? So whoever this entity is, it's presented itself to the hypnotic subject as uh, a wizard, kind of as a cheeky little joke about being wise. So they're in an interdimensional place of... Uh, meeting to talk so that people from the physical can meet with entities from the spiritual and the dimensions touch and they meet to get information from each other her, her job this is janet i believe her name was her job is to take the experience of past lives and to use the information to help people uh there are these varied crystalline structures and she brings the experience of having had many soul experiences. Uh, there's a description of crystals and there's a description of these souls, soul fragments coming back together. And I just wrote in the margin plasma because that's what this sounds like. Um, Meditation helps humans raise their vibration and be able to handle the integration of all these vibrations from soul experiences the higher energies this particular subject is strong and she can handle many dimensional energies at the same time most people are not able to handle the knowledge of various other beings um, as in our myths that are real in various other dimensions so what canon's being told is that there are stranger things <laughs> in the world, as Shakespeare said, to paraphrase. Her job is to open the planet up so that other energy can enter to help us with earth changes. You can become more conscious um, of the work that you're supposed to be here doing in your dreams and in meditation. These special souls help clear the planet to ease our burden. Your role will depend on the spiritual work that you do. It's just a matter of being ready and making the decision to speed up that journey in that direction. Some people don't believe uh, this. They aren't the only, they don't believe that they're the only life form. Um, they just they don't believe that there are other life forms. They just they just aren't ready. You know, there's this resistance to this knowledge. But it's not because some people are better than others or, you know, I'm more advanced and evolved. You can't, you know, it's not like that. It's you're given the information that you can handle. Uh, too much is poison. It's not good for you. Enough people have to be at the same vibration for growth of the entire planet to be facilitated. The earth needs uh, servers and each of us has a job to do. Not everyone serves in the same capacity. The action of everybody is important. Individuals need to meditate and strengthen their body and be with good people and people of good heart and people of good vibration. Karma often requires you to face your trauma. Who was I thinking about earlier? Oh, oh, okay. I did a reading on Hunter Biden and that is exactly 
what his reading said. He's at a moment of facing his trauma. This is a paradigm shift personally for him. So you have to tell the tyrant, whoever or whatever that is to your soul, that uh, you won't crush me this time. This time I'm going to prevail. It's not about a power struggle. It's about overcoming fear and strengthening yourself. It's about the growth within the person overcoming the fear, which is tremendous because death was often horrendous in past lives. And there are multiple emotions about authority and power and who's in charge and abuse and corruption. All those are rolled into one and it's for us to overcome that. And of course, the body and the emotions and the mind can only handle so much at a time or it's damaging. So the person has to face all that stuff, but in the right time. So we can harm people on many levels. Uh, we can murder with words, with ridicule and violence. Ridicule is violence. And we have to uh, meditate and take care of our bodies to deal with the increase the level of frequency of the vibrations as everything changes. Chapter 31, Those Left Behind. So this moves on to that part of the discussion, but it's a continuation of the previous session that Cannon was doing. Many are remembering who they are now, and this is a big pivotal moment for the earth. Some people are ambassadors to bridge the information, to help others awaken, and I think what's really vital to remember is we're all helping each other. Well, should be <laughs> helping each other. Um, where did I go? So here is when you awaken out of a dream that, that you're alone as a planet. This is the time that we as humans awaken and realize, oh, we're not, you know, the master race of the universe. We're alone in, in the galaxies and no, 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 we're, the earth is evolving. We're evolving. Wake up and smell the coffee. So it's unique in how it's evolving because it's happening over the entire planet all at one time. For those who decide to stay um, in their karma, okay, they'll stay with the old earth and they'll go on to evolve. And if something happens and the earth is no longer with us because it's destroyed, they'll go on elsewhere, just not here. So those left will witness a destruction that has happened many times before. And Atlantis uh, actually now exists in another dimension. There will be two experiences those who stay will uh, perceive the other people as dead and gone. And those who evolve will perceive those who remain as dead and gone. So, you know, we don't know. New Earth, Old Earth, hard to say. What matters? Your day-to-day -day choices. So there will be two experiences on an entire planet as the planet moves into another dimension. Many have come from far universes to witness this. I think they brought their own popcorn. So this planet is unique because we see ourselves as so separate and so special, and others know that they're part of the source as are we. We just haven't figured that out. Our capacity to love is deep. It's remarkable that we've reached the level we have considering the restrictions that we have. Our capacity to fear is deep due to the power and control thing. There could be more soul growth on Earth because uh, we think we separate, we're separate. Uh, we have to discover that uh, we're all in this together, that we're not alone, and we have to find that truth out, and we have to find it out on our own, and then there will be more um, soul growth. And this particular little
quote here addresses the question, won't people notice the others are gone? <laughs> I think that is the burning question. Um, she's, Cannon asks this and says, you know, I have to explain this to people. And she's told, we understand. We will give you this explanation. We hope this helps. People are going to start falling out of people's lives. They're going to start noticing them falling away quite rapidly now. This is creepy. Is anyone else getting a chill on the back of their neck? People are going to start falling away. They're going to start noticing them falling away quite rapidly. In other words, people, family members, whoever they have been close to, just falling away, disappearing. And it will happen overnight. So by the time the shift happens, some of those people will already have fallen out of their life, will separate, will just disappear, not be around. So-and-so moved over there, left town, went to another state. Do you understand? Kenneth says, yes, but we could go to the police and try to find the person. And the answer is it won't happen that way. It, it will be them moving away, something happening, distancing, distancing, distancing. Maga. <laughs> and by the time it actually occurs, the distance will already be there. Haven't you had people fall out of your life lately? And she says, yes, of course, we could always contact them if we needed to. And the answer is, but you won't. That's our point. You won't contact them. It will just be a natural falling away. The frequencies and vibrations will no longer match and therefore they will fall out of your mind. The need to contact them won't be there. Cannon says this means that they're either staying with the old earth or they're going on to the new one. And the answer is in some cases, there have been those that have left early and are working on the other side of the veil. You're aware of that. But some of those that disappear after a period of time, you think, I wonder what happened to that person. But you don't have the urge to contact them like you would normally. You don't have that driving urge. Oh, I'm concerned. I must call. I must reach out. It's not the same. You find that your need to connect with them just isn't there. It just falls away. You forget. And... uh the next thing is, um, she says she's trying to help people. He says, exactly what you're helping to do, you're helping people to do. It will happen. It's not going to happen in the way people think, where there'll be a cataclysm or this or that or the other thing. No, it will just be like you wake up one morning and you think everything's normal and you're going on and you will be there in the new earth. You will notice a difference in resonance, but you will already be there because your resonance is increasing every day already as it is. And so all of a sudden, one day, you will reach the prerequisite cycles per second to take you from here to there. Let's explain it this way. If somebody came back right now from the 1800s to see you, you would glow to them. You've already reached those cycles per second that would glow to a human form of the 1800s. So in essence, your cycles per second are raising. And Canon comments, could this be one reason why when John and the others went to visit Nostradamus in conversations with Nostradamus, he saw them as glowing energy spirits of the future? Was this because they were actually vibrating at a faster frequency that made them glow? That is something to think about. <laughs> So the increased vibrations pass from person to person. Uh, we activate each other. And uh, I think we see that here. I think, you know, I've met so many people and people are interconnecting here. And there's a reason for that. Some people are activated uh, not to do anything, just to be their energy and others are broadcasters to spread it like a signal like how they said when she may, went to places she brought her energy with her and we're going to live lead much longer lives we won't die we will opt for transition there will be beginner souls uh, incarnating now to learn from proximity to old souls they won't make the shift because they're just starting out they don't get left behind. They go elsewhere to keep growing. There's a separation. Those ready to evolve with the earth and those going elsewhere. And ours is not to figure out why 
either we're so superior because we've moved or we're so inferior because we're left behind. Ours is to figure out what can we do today to help other people. Chapter 32, Physical Effects as the Body Changes. I think your hair gets short. <laughs> as vibrations and frequencies change, people's bodies will adjust and, and will have symptoms. So people will start being depressed, will have arrhythmias, higher blood pressure, muscle and joint pain, and they'll go to the doctor and the doctor will say, oh, there's nothing wrong. Others uh, will be even worse. In 2005, um, this uh, person had seizures and numbness, but she was told, well, but it's not a stroke. And she passed out at work and she had an MRI and they identified nodules that looked like Christmas tree lights in her brain and in her lungs. And she had abnormal liver enzymes. And when they looked again, the lights had moved to different areas and they put her on steroids, which caused diabetes. And in a trance, she was told she had no disease. Her body was rewired to handle the higher vibrations. And the symptoms were because the work had been done a little too fast. She was eventually fine. And she was told she would do great things during the shift. So here's more stuff from other clients. Somebody named Patsy had allergies and she was told in trance, this is from living on this planet, you're allergic to the earth. And it was to remind her that, you know, the earth is not your home. Uh, other symptoms that you're having, your body is changing. Um, don't be afraid of it because the fear is destructive. A woman named Carol, the doctors wanted to remove what they told her was a pelvic mass. And they, uh, she told she was told by, I guess, spirit guides that she could heal herself, that it had to do with changing states of matter from solid to plasma. There is wisdom in our bodies on a cellular level to heal itself with information from previous lives. And many people are undergoing weird things like that. And uh, the comment that canon was told was that the medical field in general is very archaic <laughs> what she was told not my opinion <laughs> chapter 33 the library so she has a session with nancy who comes from the trance is an old man in a library who consults and counsels and guides and helps them um, figure out how best to facilitate, help souls figure out best how to facilitate the lessons of their next life. And in this library, there's a wealth of information. She's told that knowing past lives for her is not needed. Um, she's moving into a non-karmic existence. She's worked it out. And it, she'll be her karma will be canceled as we move into this new universe and it won't be necessary to fulfill the mission of this life to know about past lives uh, to move on to the next um it doesn't matter what happened before to her i mean she's not going to gain a benefit of knowing what happened to her before uh, because we're not she's no longer going to be on the earth as we know it anyway the big picture can be seen, but it can still change. So we're going in a direction, but how that unfolds is debatable. Those moving to a higher energy will know, and those staying at the lower energy may not know. All those moving will have healing gifts. And because the shift is coming, anything anyone does now is... Uh, it's learning. It's like taking off the karmic training wheels. We must move away from heavy foods. Oh, no wonder I couldn't read it. I don't want to hear about this. <laughs> we must move away from heavy foods for the body to descend. It must be lighter. And uh, this is not necessarily about pounds. It's about density and energy. 
and they recommend grazing instead of eating big meals. We will eventually move to a liquid diet and then no food because we'll get our energy from light. Well, I don't like that. That's sad. I wonder if they'll have chocolate light. Hmm. Section 8, Unusual Energies. Chapter 34, A Totally New Alternative to a Walk-In. I still haven't wrapped my head totally around that yet, so here we go. Canon has learned that there are many strange things going on of which we are not conscious. In 2007, for example, Christine in trance is robed as a man in the woods in the 40s, in his 40s, but that's old, and she felt that he had been traveling, had a pouch with dried meat and stone carving tools and a sword. He didn't know uh, what time period he was from or where he was from. He was an explorer and helper traveling by star navigation and had been doing this for millennia. Was not from Earth and had to inhabit a body to function on the Earth. This guy is really a light being Energy can travel far and fast and uh, because it's energy and take on a new body every time it goes to a new place. So this person had just died a few minutes ago. He encountered this person and his, his the old man's energy entered the regenerated body that had just been left by the soul. So somebody died. He happened to be in the right place at the right time and took over the body. And because his energy was so high and everything, it's like it rejuvenated it. So there, he's learning at Earth to be able to, to teach survival um, of upcoming events. And the most important thing for all of us even today, this is what he learned in the past, but even today, is tolerance, empathy, and compassion. What were the things that they're not allowed to teach in Florida now? Diversity, tolerance, and <laughs> what was the other thing? So this man had been in other planets and other galaxies during wars, and um, some entities had armor built into their bodies, but the human body is more fragile. Going forward, he said he's uh, part of a small colony of um, built of round huts. It's not a colony of huts, but it's a colony that lives in round huts. And his job is to teach the young ones. The older ones are reticent about his new ideas, but because uh, he comes from elsewhere, you know. But it's okay if they let him teach the young. Uh, he has to stay away from cities because he would be captured and experimented on because they would know that he was unique. They wouldn't understand our physiology, he said. Uh, it's too advanced because his energy has changed the body and it has adapted. He's planning on taking some children back with them for a while to this, you know, other place. Um, it'll only seem like a few weeks, but they're going to receive many lessons. Their bodies will dematerialize for a while because of the energy on his planet and rematerialize when they return to Earth. On his planet, they live underground. The atmosphere uh, was contaminated a long time ago because they had been attacked by rebels. He says, we live in large nuclear families of pods and we live thousands of years. The Earth children will return with technology uh, and then the Earth beings can use the technology and the energy beings will have to move on. They will share with humans the technology for interstellar travel because we need to recolonize. Earth is not going to be here that much longer. Now, this is in the past that he's talking about this. We can show them where to go to repopulate. So this is being entered... Um, this being, rather, entered Christine's body in a near-death experience in 1991. Cannon didn't know uh, that this could actually happen. Christine had a cardiac arrhythmia and was dead for a few minutes. And while that happened, he entered. She agreed to it 
she just doesn't remember on a conscious level. So Christine's soul left, but her memories remained like an imprint. Christine, uh, her mother died in 1989, and Christine had been really depressed and wanted to leave. She was done. And she had that attitude before she had the near-death experience. And her soul has gone on and she's happier. This is, this is what canon is being told. So canon was told when you bring her out of her hypnotic trance, it's okay to go ahead and tell her this fact. She needs to know. Because eventually, the soul in her body is going to go with her original soul and her mother's soul um, and learn stuff, learn about technology, and then return at, with an important role on the new earth and to help make the transition for others to make the transition into the other dimension. She'll have to persuade people to use free will and go because it is for our own good to evolve. She will train them how to make the transition. It's all part of a larger plan to return to source. She will go in astral travel. No one here is going to notice that. She won't have a conscious memory of it. There's so much going on that we're not aware of. It's creepy. So this is a different type of walk-in. Usually the person wants to leave and a spirit uh, they, they do a swap and, uh, so that the person who wants out can go and the, the spirit that wants in can have the body. But this situation is different because, um, it, it, there's no former karmic connection with the person on earth and the light being coming in, but the soul did agree. So this coming into humans is a clever way to help bring change without interfering with free will. And these new souls uh, also don't accrue karma. A new session, Annette in trance, is at a meeting with the council on the spirit side and they're convincing her to come to earth for the very first time for the shift. Her job is to bring balancing energy. Each soul is attached by a cord to a source of energy and can... Disperse this energy. There is a lattice, a grid, everywhere on earth for this energy. As a person grows, the body can hold more energy if the body has been adjusted, but not everybody is um, because all that happens at once because time has no meaning. What happens as an adult affects you as a child. So regressing to your past as a child can help you tune up your vibration. I'm not really sure I understand this, but that's what she was told. So the only way for the earth to continue is for people on the earth to wake up. The message we need to wake up to is so big that they have been giving it to canon in slow bits over time, in small digestible bits over time. A plan to save us from ourselves uh, started after we developed nukes and it could not they could not let us destroy the planet because there's a ripple effect. People were stuck in many lifetimes of accumulated karma and uh, that's our problem because we have free will. But the threat of nukes to the universe is too great. They had to run interference, but they couldn't interfere with free will. So it's a delicate balance. But they could get higher, higher evolved beings who had no karma to volunteer to come and to enter bodies and to help. And they came in waves to spread positive energy. Time is running out, so they're not entering as babies. That takes too long. But as walk-ins and souls are contracting with each other to do this. The earth is alive and crying to be saved and it's manifested in floods, earthquakes, etc. The earth wants to reincarnate and take those who can adjust to the higher vibrations with her.
The old earth is headed for destruction, not of the entire planet, that would be too disruptive for the entire universe, but there will be a split and an elevation to the new earth. We'll leave the old earth behind and those in fear and violence can stay. The new earth will be for those who are about to evolve. Our vibrations have to be raised and earth is trying to get ready. All the deaths from disasters are volunteers making room for helpers to come. The new earth will be born when enough have raised their vibration. Change is slow, so we must work on our vibrations a lot. In a new session, oh, this is chapter 35, Answering the Call. Anna, in trance, says uh, there's a golden tower uh, for the gods, and uh, it's like a, a taller taller version of a, of a um, pyramid. And it's covered in designs, like a taller, skinnier, narrower, narrower pyramid. And it's covered in designs. And people imagine uh, Egyptian and Babylonians, um, but they, they were actually used for communication. They weren't just buildings that reflected Egyptian culture or Babylonian or, or Mayan or whatever. They were actually tools. They were used for communication. And the priests told them how to build them. So she in trance is a young man wearing a robe and golden sandals with gold wings and a gold necklace with a big blue stone and a gold belt with buttons like jewels and a headpiece. But she says the headpiece is a transmitter. And, uh, it's, she's reporting, this young man is reporting progress to the building. It has to be built exactly the right way because it's going to be a generator to help flow energy from the ground up. And there are helpers who, um, who've come for a while to teach humans how to do this. It's simple technology that will change lives. The helpers can use it transmit thoughts but this is not his home and when it, the job is done he can leave he has done this before elsewhere they come as a group they teach and sometimes they are seen as gods uh, but some more advanced people know and are prepared um, they do some inbreeding hybridization and they sometimes do leave offspring with superior abilities to uh, continued help. And people worship them as gods. As long as people keep the tower as sacred, the energy will be good and it will transmit. And if they don't, it will distort. And if they become distorted, it will distort. As it distorts, the energy will go lower and the tower will lose its gold and it will fade over time to become just a stone monument. Uh, he says, I am from the gold place of five suns, but they have no radiation. And uh, then he tells them that suns are all plasma. They radiate knowledge, not heat. We look like tentacles of an energy field. And we can morph to anything. And our whole place that we live undulates with energy. They teleport. They only use ships um, if the energy of the planet that they go to is distorted. So that's why we see them. Their wings act like deflectors and satellite dishes. And when she leaves, uh, she'll drop this form. He, she, drop this form. Time is relevant to the universe that you're in. On Earth, it's perceived as long and uh, linear. 
dark ones used earth and resources uh, that do not honor the natural evolution and they misused the resources and the planet is weeping. These energy beings are incarnating to help, but bodies are heavy. There's a lot of fear. There's a lot of doubt. And uh, it's hard to find a body that they could deal with the vibration of the energy that they have. This subject, Anna, experienced uh, the walk-in as an out-of-body experience on a cruise. She felt different after, and she was subconsciously informed of what was going on. There was a transference of consciousness. She has access to the knowledge of the other soul and will receive necessary information, but it's all done subliminally. She can go and speak uh, when it's time for a change and begin to access either uh quantum knowledge or whatever and the message that she has is to don't fear the old earth is fear and corruption the new earth is a haven and a jewel it has a light ether chapter 36 the traveler of the worlds the new subject jean uh, sees destruction and chaos an orange sun clouded over something boiling up from the earth, lots of fear, and increased energy as the earth is breaking and people are dying. It's a cataclysm that totally changes life on the planet. She comes from, this event, comes from people abusing power and abusing each other, using thought in a negative way. And this is how it manifests. She could do nothing. There are too many people abusing power. She could only watch. She said, I saw it coming. I tried to teach them and they would not listen. Now I'm above it. I got into something and I flew away. We saw it coming. We came to teach them, but they got too power hungry and destroyed themselves. We built a scapecraft in secret to help save the ones who were not abusing power. The craft was powered by the mind. She says, the earth is not my home. This was a failed mission. My body is different. It's long and narrow, more like an electromagnetic field. And I can manipulate it to make them see me as a human. Now she's going on to a new mission to teach people. Uh, the good of heart are going with her. I watched from above as the planet folded in on itself. On my planet, I am big, red, and usually look like a grasshopper. I change form whenever I want. She was sent to the other place, uh, other places, but uh, missions did fail. And the escape ship was sabotaged and then found herself alone in the dark, resting. And eventually goes to a place to get more information to make her teaching efforts more effective. And she's shown the tree of life, how to live. A slightly different information that may be better at getting people to listen. She says, I have to learn this new better way and will require more numbers of intelligent people to help. Instead of just teaching people, we'll be changing their structure, rewiring them. She finds herself in a very slow energy. People really need to awaken <laughs> and it'll be hard to even communicate. So she's entered the body of Jeannie, the subject, and explains that the soul is an electromagnetic field and it can enter a body at fetal development or at any other time it wants after getting permission of the other soul. It's hard to be in this dense energy on earth, but the subject has the ability to gather all of her energy to heal and teach. Humans must come to realize that they're part of the God force. They shall become the light that they really are in their consciousness and will be able to dissemble their molecules and a uh, heavy, dense body just won't work anymore. So this next section is called Journey to Earth. In 2007, Frances finds herself on the shore of the ocean at night. 
Uh, she's a very young female in a dress, had flowers in her hair, a green stone medallion necklace. Um, she's young in body and old in soul. Part of a group of tall beings, even though she's short, who live in houses amongst the trees. And she sees her reflection in the water and discovers she has wings. There's a larger community group that are the guardians of all around them. And she's part of this and has been asked to leave the group to gather information and knowledge and knows it's her job, but she's torn about leaving. But she decides to go, feels an obligation, will need to leave her present body. The body will be uninhabited um, fully, but inhabited by part of her soul. Her soul will divide up a little bit until she returns. She'll travel through the tunnel of time because she's being sent to Earth. She has agreed, made a contract, and they are grateful. She knows it will be very hard. She knows she will also be helping with the harmony, balance, connection, and awareness. She has a light to bring with her and will always show her the way home. Um, she's in a group, a collective, that are coming to help balance the energy of the earth. Before being born on earth, she's near the couple that she's going to be born to, learning about them. Birth is a shock to her. It's very difficult to be in the human body. This is her first life on earth. Um, and it's not as the subject that Canon is talking to, Francis. Um, Francis is in a love-hate relationship because, uh, oh, this is interesting. So this incarnation is with Francis and Francis is in this love-hate relationship because their vibrations are different and uh, they're, they're not feeling things with the same intensity. And they've been fighting. And the reason is that this disagreement in vibrations causes anger and pain because it's all fear-based. So chapter 37, The Healing Energy Speaks. So we have difficulty imagining or accepting the reality of other worlds. We aren't fully capable. We would be overwhelmed and not able to function if we got all the information all at once. And it's actually surprising to me sometimes how resistant the majority of people are to the notion because to me, it just seems evident. And to everybody I talk to, it's like, well, of course. You know? But it really is uh, difficult for many people to accept. So Ken and subjects are trying to relate topics that are totally alien to their minds often. This is news to them too. And Canon is told uh, that even analogies that humans can relate to are inadequate. Uh, it won't all make sense to us, and um, we need to suspend our sense of reality because this is unknowable. It's inexplicable. It's really hard to describe and explain. So the subject, Patricia, is in a white shimmering landscape. The colors are undulating. She's actually, she herself is actually a shimmering silver ball. She is home. She realizes she's been gone for a long time. Glad to be back. There's no struggle here and no want. They have substance, but they're not solid. There's much molecular movement. Uh, they're not in spirit form. They undulate to communicate. So... I know people who do that. <laughs> so this is a resting place. Uh, their physical shape is restrictive. Um, that, no, the physical shape they have on Earth is restrictive. So back in her home base, um, it feels free. She amuses herself while resting with brief exploring and creating. They can make music with their movement. They join their energies together and make group decisions to go out and help them and then return and uh, we go out together to raise the energy on the earth and they can be in the form of something or they can just be in the air their movement increases their vibration uh, and dissipates density they can enter an existing form 
by asking permission of the spirit, which is temporary, but this feels uplifting for them. They could expand their energy to assist the whole area of animals and plants, but they don't assist the spirit because the spirit has its own job to do its free will. They just provide energy and disrupt the negative. Areas of density and lower vibration are a challenge. In the body of Patricia, for her to raise her energy, um, she needs energy healing. And if you want energy to do healing, your intent matters. You just ask and then they're there. So apparently you can get help for issues just by asking for it. We create our frequencies, we create our possibilities, and we facilitate the energy that we can use. But your intention must be 100% good. They will not be used for anything other than good. The person will receive the energy but must use the subconscious to do the work. Patricia was able to heal her own knees without surgery after this session and uh, it could be proven on x-ray. The doctors were astounded. The body is created to heal itself according to what Dolores Cannon was told. Chapter 38, The Final Solution. Ooh, I don't like that. Uh, 2005, George, in a trance, is not in a physical place. He just sees blue, a place of calm and oneness, not of time, not of distance, outside time space. It's where he came from. It's not where we start, but we all have to go through that. Um, he could have been avoided, but he was needed to come back because, oh, being on Earth, but he needed, they needed him to come back because, quote unquote, they can't learn. We taught them, showed them, explained the consequences. We miscalculated how much fear there is, too much fear on Earth. We thought they understood, but they didn't listen, and uh, we left energy in place as safeguards. But negative influences began, greed, fear, and power. We didn't think it would be so widespread. The last time he was here, Atlantis, they abused their power and knowledge. They misunderstood what it was for. They strayed from the path that we gave them, and we were called in to correct it. The negative was getting too great. It would affect other entities and other planets. It had to be stopped and corrected. People were abusing the energy and knowledge that they had, Without nurturing, without growing, they were manipulating and using it to do, uh, to destroy and to get power over others. They were manipulating crystal energy for negative things and looking for catalysts to increase the power. And these crystals were um, buried. They weren't allowed to uh, get the catalyst because they knew the damage. The, the, we weren't ready for the knowledge. They used a knowledge to change DNA to get trees to produce more fruit, but then they began to mess with human DNA, the way legends, minotaurs, satyrs, mermaids, the new science, and uh, this was not the purpose for DNA, and they shouldn't have been doing it. It showed it shouldn't be done. Our scientists are getting into this again now, and history is repeating itself, and we're going down the same wrong paths. We're trying to genetically modify plants and clone animals, and more of it's going on than we know, including human, and this is what she's told. Now it's being done for military reasons of defense. They're weaponizing DNA for bioterrorism and super soldiers. They're creating bodies to resist and repel uh, bioterrorism, but they will turn against us and will destroy already uh, naturally acquired immunity. So Atlantis, this is this is what he's told under trance. Atlantis was destroyed because they wouldn't stop experimenting, and uh, greater entities came and corrected it, and they would not. Uh, allow them to exist anymore. The population was eliminated. Um, and they hid the uh, proof of the civilization underwater so that it could not be found. They allowed a little bit to survive, a, a little bit of the people to survive, to keep the story alive, to know not to do it again. It was a necessity to destroy almost everything and start over to prevent uh, galactic 
chain reaction. They could only interfere if we come close to causing a ripple effect that would affect other uh, dimensions too. That would be unjustified. They can't allow it. The collective understands what needs to be done. The majority of Atlantis is underwater, and it, this has happened a number of times. The ones who are the negative influence have returned, and they look like physical bodies, but they have a different agenda. There are different levels of help here. The first level is uh, helping people change to avoid disaster. The final level is the entities who will put an end to the whole thing. We will correct it. They don't tell us how. We're not allowed to know. Of the first level, there are seven incarnate entities, like in charge. They're not in touch with each other. They must work separately. And if they can't facilitate change, they'll be the final correction. So there are seven, what look like people to us, spread around the globe right now, trying to fix it. The subject is one. And she will not reveal who that subject is. And we won't whom we say. Uh, it's a guy, and he feels he has power and consulted Canon to discover why, and this is why he's one of the seven. He's being worked with subconsciously. He's able to move objects and locations. And he will have many abilities that will resurface from the past. These seven are being looked for by governments, uh, helped by the negative others. Ooh, that's like a movie. And by the time they know who he is, they won't be able to harm him or stop him. These seven are just uh, a group, one group. There are others. George had childhood history of kidney issues. Many like him have physical problems because of their higher energy. He and others uh, are being helped to heal their bodies because of the energy. Chapter 39, The Absorption. She planned on uh, the last chapter that we just covered being the end of the book. The energy in George that she spoke about was uh, key. It'll carry out total destruction if we don't change. Then she had a surprise session in 2007 with Tony, an English teacher, who described the source, the heart of the sun, the heart of God, total bliss, soothing, calming, light, and love, the all that is. Tony's voice and demeanor completely changed in trance, uh, became extremely powerful and emotional. Her words, talking to Canon, ended in musical notes, 100% exaltation, and Canon said she had no words. She was told that all creation is a beautiful dream of God. We are an investment in that dream. We are but a spark of the greater spark as the dream unfolds, a vast experience, a play. God begins the dream, we carry it on, it manifests. God creates the dream, the dreamer dreams the dream, then the dream dreams, then all is reabsorbed into the dreamer. The human experiment is uh, to see to which point the dreamer will dream, will allow himself to dream. You are part of creation. You have the gift of creation. There are no limits unless we create them. Dream is not sleep. Dream is using the creative mind, envisioning that which will be. It's not limited. Some people choose negativity. We are sent out as sparks to get information for our benefit. God is all-knowing. God is already whole. The purpose of the spark is to move through love in all manifestations. Canon was told, go beyond what you have been told. God is whole. The spark idea is limiting. God does not need knowledge. You can't add to God. You can't give God information. God is everything. We consider ourselves individuals. That's the dream. We are not the dream. We are the all. <laughs> I'm just telling you what she was told. 
So if you fear losing your individuality, you aren't ready to experience anything but your individuality. Continue to dream and be at peace. No one will force anything on you. God is with you. You are safe in your individuality, but when you are ready, you will accept the knowledge that God is whole and you will have no fear. Uh, there's nothing to fear. You are safe within your own creation. Like light coming through pinpricks in a tapestry, we raise our awareness, small and slow. What about when God awakens us? Uh, there is no answer. The source is whole, unchanging. It is as is. The God with sparks is only one plane. There is beyond that, things beyond God. And they're not allowed to talk about it. Canon asks, if it's so great, why does the spark even leave and then a new voice comes out of this person and this is ugh. and she's told it's too much to explain now with human ability canon is told that she has taken uh only baby steps and it's time for um for us to know uh to at least implant the acceptance of leaving and returning to source that most of us don't even accept that far in the future another world shall manifest itself and even then it will be a dream and you will move beyond the dream there is nothing negative only god about hard times right now a new entity speaks to her and says do not accept the negative and it cannot manifest you are God. Use your thoughts to manifest God. Open your God self and allow the light to enter. The new world you envision is inside you. You aren't moving to a different planet. You are breaking out of your shell. This planet is bringing forth the light. It is your essence. Say, I am the light. Hear me, God. I am light. You are gods, you are light. Come forth in your light, return to yourself. Beyond that is a great awareness. So powerful, it affected the mic. Oh, this, this voice was talking and Canon was recording it. And uh, the mic failed because of the power of what was going on. When she came out of trance, Tony said that she'd seen three levels. The place where all humans uh, creating was taking place, the place where we had to experience our creations, and the third one, the new earth. Beyond that, the body turns to light encased in a shell, and then the light breaks through and spreads for eternity. You are seated with light. You break out of your shell. So we have trouble understanding that God is the all and need not be altered and sends out sparks to return with information. This is the dream. This We're not going to understand this. This is being told to us and we're still not going to get it. This expansion of God is limited by our ability to perceive. There are no limits. Much more than we can possibly understand is in this incarnation because of the energy of earth. The li it limits the mind. It needs too much energy to understand for this body to handle. You'll receive the ability to not have limitations of form when you're ready to embrace it. The denseness of earth only reflects the uh, denseness that we're willing to accept. We can create differently and we can manifest a different variation of the dream. The light is in you. Embrace the light, the new earth. Allow it to come forth. If you read this, you are ready to know it and let it go into the energy field. Just allow the possibility. For Tony, the dream world of sleep is reality and awakening is the dream. She is moving to a higher vibration. 
if you stretch fabric, you create holes for the light to come in. This is like the growth of the consciousness. The awareness, the light is being allowed to come forth. You don't need to obsess over past lives and the wheel of karma. You are uh, free to be released from this vision of reality. Cannon was bothered with the loss of individuality, but is told that she isn't ready for the rest of the information. <laughs> she went home and slept on this and woke up with this new understanding, which she wrote down. We do have distinct personalities. We had them in all our lifetimes. Once over, those lives' memories, uh, the individuality, no longer exists. Therefore, being absorbed into a greater intelligence, we have done it many times already. It's happened before, and it'll happen again. We'll move on in our development. Nothing is lost. It all becomes part of the greater whole. We see ourselves as complete, but we are a splinter of a much greater totality from the original source. Even the tiny sparks create worlds. Like, uh, like a gem with many facets, all is absorbed into the all. All is recorded in the Akashic records. Nothing is lost. The key is progress and movement. Tony's new vision of levels, the first is duality, separation, separate realities where individuals exist. The second is source or God with awareness of experience, with desire to learn and create. And the third is the ultimate source we have not met. This Ultimate source has no need for experience. It is the whole. It's not the ultimate, but she was told she and we need to digest the new information we have here first, and then we'll be ready for more. <laughs> and that's the end of the book. So I would recommend this book. I think uh, I did my best to give you a sense of what these trance sessions were like and the strange worlds they describe. More importantly, the message behind it all, the lesson behind it all. And I, I will tell you that we're going to continue with this series and uh, with Canon's final book, which sort of ties it all together. So I don't know for sure what we'll do next week, but... Uh, it's all coming up soon. Thank you very much for watching. I hope any of that made sense and didn't freak everybody out too much. And please let me know if you have comments or questions and we'll do cards on it. And in the meantime, Slanga Foil, Slancha. <laughs>